Brattleboro Gallery Walk goes virtual. Hi, my name's Priya and I'm going to be a freshman at BUHS this year. Hi, I'm Shauhan and I'm going to be a freshman somewhere. <laughs> I'm moving. And we'd like to welcome you to the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center. What I love about Gallery Walk is there are a lot of exhibits to look at and there's food and usually there's people. <laughs> I love that during Gallery Walk we get to appreciate some of the local artists here and I feel more connected to this town. To me, art is a really important way to express yourself and it comes in so many different forms so it can really be different for anyone, like music and then the paintings that you see behind me. Sarah. I'm the exhibitions manager here at Brattleboro Museum and Art Center um, and the museum is open after being shut down for about three months because of the COVID pandemic but now we're back we're open to the public and we're really excited to be part of virtual gallery walk today we're just going to take a look at some of the shows that we have up at the time being um, this is an exhibit by Stephen Kinder who is an artist who's based in New York City. Um, he has been an abstract painter for a long time, but in his kind of one of his other practices for a long, long time has involved um, working with people on the streets of New York who have experienced or are experiencing homelessness to um, form a relationship with them and paint their portraits. Typically, portraiture was used as a way to elevate people in positions of power to celebrate their wealth and their um, kind of illustriousness, famous people, kings, queens, presidents, whatnot. What Stephen has done is um, he has decided to paint portraits of people who are often 
overlooked or ignored or purposefully um, kind of pushed to the side so that we don't have to see their pain or um, the trauma that they've experienced. So by painting these on a really grand scale and elevating them, um, he's actually kind of put the portraiture tradition on its head a little bit and encouraging us to meet the eyes of people that we might otherwise um, not see or not acknowledge and to really see their personhood and their individuality. Good afternoon. My name is Chantilly Gander. And I'm McLean Gander. And you're joining us here today at the Wilhouse Clay Center in the Harmony Lot for Gallery Walk. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Wilhouse Clay Center, it has been here for about a year and a half. And the co-owners include Tita Hilsden and Sherry Zabersky. So why don't you follow us in to see what it's all about and what they do here. Hi, Tita. Hi, Shanta. Hi, Matt. Hi, Tia. How are you? So, um, why don't you take us on a little tour and tell us what we're looking at? I see a lot of beautiful pieces. I would love to tell you about Wheelhouse Clay Center. So, you are in the showroom when you come into the studio. We have the work of some of the potters here, not everyone, but some of us. And everything else beyond what you're seeing here is makerspace. Mm -hmm. This is a community clay center, correct? So it's part uh, showroom and then the rest of it, people can actually come here and create these pieces? That's right. We've created multiple ways for people to work with clay here. They can rent space so that they can come in whenever they want. And sometimes we also have public events where someone can come in and for just a two hour block of time, learn one project. So we have different ways, and we have classes. So we have different ways of allowing people to come in and work with clay at whatever their interest level. This is an S.D. Orton Company style JJ. Very popular. And this one was made in 1916. It's solid oak, and it was made for traveling. These organs were taken all over the world by missionaries and they were used wherever organs were used um, on the street for the Salvation Army. They were used um, in uh, traveling 
troops, vaudeville and such, um, used to uh, back square dances when there was no piano. So very popular, um, very useful instrument. J.J. was Julius J. Esty, who was the son of Jacob Esty. And I'm pretty sure this was named after him. We have four octaves only, whereas the other organs have five or sometimes six. And as usual, you pump the bellows. And that's our sound. It's very brilliant because these things need to be really heard, especially when people are singing. So over here in the first couple of cabinets, we have the work of my business partner, Sherry Zabriskie. She's been a professional potter for many years. And so her birch bark is really the, her signature pottery. Mm -hmm. Most people know Sherry for her birch bark. Um, in the second cabinet, you also see her very playful octopus pottery mm -hmm. and other kinds of things that she does. So Carol Ross is our guest potter here right now. We generally, and we often will change that at Gallery Walk, we'll have a special guest featured for Gallery Walk. So Carol Ross is currently our featured artist. Um, Emily Bourne grew up here, went off to college, became a ceramic artist, and is now working here at Wheelhouse Clay Center, and we are very pleased to be part of that full circle of pottery making in Brattleboro. Uh, this is my own work, these two cabinets. And I've, let's see, I started learning clay in 1977. Mm. And um, I really fell in love with, with dinnerware, with the kind of things that just enhance your eating experience. You use them when you eat, so I love making mugs, bowls, plates, and I love making custom dinnerware for people. When you're putting together like a set of bowls like those, um, what are you thinking of? The first thing I'm thinking about is a really strong form. So the, the curves look beautiful, um, that they have an earthy look to them. And the second thing I'm thinking about is how they're going to function. I want them to be the right weight um, I want them to have a little bit of curve in the plate so your peas don't roll off the plate. Um, and I want them to, you know, I want to talk with the customer so that the piece that they're buying really fits their own aesthetic. And then we choose the visual elements that are going to work, so the glaze um, or any decoration that they want it. For the maker space now, come on in. And I'm so, going to let you hold my back. So we start basically here, and what you're coming into is what we call the shared rental area. Mm -hmm. So all of these folks have shelves. They're all renters, and they have a private shelf to keep their own work on, and they use wheels that are shared in common. Mm -hmm. And they can come in whenever they want. This whole area, certainly the common renters are, that's our most popular rental here. That's what most people want. On the other side over here, you're seeing our private rentals. These folks rent a whole little piece of real estate that's their own. And so they have their own wheels. They're not sharing, although they'll share if you ask. One of our private renters, this is Brooks Healy, and he's making things right now. Today I threw some plates, and in this morning I used a template to press in a mold to the leaf. I like working with leaves. I cut these out yesterday and I'm molding them for a sculpture of some sort. You can here's see. A, here's an example of 
a piece of Brooks's, a finished piece of Brooks's, where he has used lots of leaves. That's so He's our leafy guy around here. <laughs> so we're about to leave the maker space and come into the classroom. All the students get to come back. We're open seven days a week for students to come back and practice. So here is, uh, this is a class. And so all the folks, when they've made something, they put their pots on shelves. And once they're dry, the next thing is they go into kilns. So come back here. You'll see lots of pots on shelves. And this is the one piece that Sherry and I do um, for everyone. We load and fire those kilns. But everyone, else, everyone does everything on their own here from start to finish, except for loading the kilns. So this is a kiln that fired last night. And so it's still quite hot. And it is 1130 degrees, but it was closer to 2200 degrees when it finished firing. That must be a resource that really isn't readily available to most folks who are into ceramics. In other words, you're providing something that people can't easily get. That is absolutely true. It's not too hard to buy a wheel and take it home and put it somewhere in your house. But the, uh, the setting up and the electrical service for the kilns is probably our single biggest expense in yeah. setting up wheelhouse. And most people don't do that in their own homes. We sometimes have special activities during gallery walk, or we used to. So we'll see where it goes. But mm -hmm. gallery walk is a precious, it's a precious thing for our town. Absolutely. And we hope that it's going to continue. And thank you both so much. Oh, it's wonderful to be in your space. Thank you. Thank you and Sherry for bringing this, uh, this to the region. You may think that playing an organ is about which key you press. However, the most important thing about playing reed organs is the feet. So a lot of what I was doing there, the crescendo and the decrescendo, was done with adjusting the pressure of the air with my feet without opening the knee lever, I can have by barely moving my feet at all. That takes skill.